Let's talk about Buddhism here. Buddhism has been of interest to me ever since I dabbled with psychedelics. There seems to be some sort of a intersection between the psychedelic state of mind and let's call it the Buddhist state of mind. They kind of seem to be leading you into a similar path, a similar way. I'm not saying I believe in Buddhism. I'm not saying I believe in his principles. I just think it's cool. It's cool to talk about it. I think the Buddha did have one of the very, very basic truths of life, which we'll talk about here. So the Buddha also, or his birth name, his name, right? We call him the Buddha is the enlightened one. His name um, is Siddhartha Gautama, I think, right? I, it's an Indian name. I, I don't know if I'm saying it right. Uh, he, this, the, his backstory is somewhat debatable, you know, there isn't anything that says, you know, this is what the story was, but allegedly he lived in a comfortable environment. He might've possibly been a prince, right? Or some living in royalty in, in a, in a, in royalty, let's say, right? He had a family, he had a wife and he was very interested and um, he really wanted to end his suffering. He has been wondering, why have I been coming back over and over? Why have I been incarnating over and over and over? What is this reincarnation? What is the cycle of death and rebirth? Why do I keep doing it? I, I want to end my suffering. So he had this calling inside of him, this soul searching calling that all of you guys watching this video definitely have, otherwise you wouldn't be watching this video this calling for more to find yourself, to find the meaning of life, to find who you are, what are you doing here? And so the Buddha had this calling and he's like, man, I got to end my suffering. Like, what the fuck, you know? What the fuck, bro? You know, I feel like I'm rats on a wheel here. I just keep coming back and back and back in, back out, death, rebirth, death, rebirth. I got to do something about this. So the Buddha goes out like all the great mystics, like Rumi, all these great mystics that you hear about, even Batuta, they just go out and explore. And um, he mingles with different mystic schools. So he tries, uh, he goes with the ascetics, I think that's what they're called. Uh, basically, the ascetics, I don't know if I'm saying the word right, but what it means is like renunciation, essentially you eat like absolute minimal food, essentially you drop out of society, right? You drop out of society completely. You eat very little food. You just kind of dwell in caves. You meditate, you get on by on very, very, very little. He tried that for a little while, went to different schools, different uh, monasteries, different ways of, of meditating and different ways of connecting with source energy. And He's like, all right, motherfuckers, I got to find the truth for myself. You know, Buddha's like, fuck this, fuck this, not working for me. Let me go. I'm going to sit under a tree. You know, Buddha's like, I'm going to sit under a tree. And I swear to all the new gods and the old gods and the bullshit gods, I am not, I am not standing up. I am not moving until I get enlightened. So the Buddha sits under the Bodhi tree and he meditates and he goes through his demons, right? He keeps sitting down and thinking, and meditating, thinking and meditating and boom, it finally hits him. It finally hits him. The Buddha is enlightened, hence the name the Buddha, the enlightened one. Buddha gets it. Buddha's like, oh, Fuck, that's why I've been coming back and forth. And this is what life is. And this is how I'm going to get out of it. And then the four noble, noble truths of the Buddha were born, came to being. And those four noble truths are truth number one, life is suffering in his meditation. And some say the Buddha sat under a tree, the Bodhi tree for 49 days. Some say, right? In his meditations, in his observation, in his realization, in his enlightenment, in his journey through his demons and in his mind, he realized life is suffering. 
And even when you get what you want, there is suffering because you're going to lose it. Because this too shall pass. Impermanence. See, for me, this is really where psychedelics intersect with Buddhism. Because the, the underlying message of psychedelics is this too shall pass. And everything is temporary. And that kind of really sits well with Buddhism. I think that's why you see a lot of crossing. And I wouldn't be surprised if like a lot of the early Buddhist monks were fucking loaded on mushrooms. So, anyway, that doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. Um, so, life is suffering. Because everything goes away. You get what you want, that too goes away. You're happy right now, you're going to suffer because that's not going to stay forever. You're healthy, you're vibrant, you're alive. You're getting all the ladies. That's not going to last forever. You know, you're going to be 70 year old, 80 year old at some point, right? And that's it. Your prime is gone, right? So it's like old age, sickness, disease, loss of loved ones. It's like, it's inherent. That's the noble truth number one. And it's a tough pill to swallow, but you can't argue with it. Really, life is suffering. It's inherent. It's inherent, inherent within this matrix, this illusion, this maya, this simulation. Clearly, you know, there's suffering. We lose things. We lose things. So that was the first thing. That was the number one thing. Number two, the root of all suffering is attachment. So the Buddha says, why do we suffer? We attach. We attach. We attach to happiness. And when we don't have it, we suffer. We feel, oh my God, I used to be so happy and I'm not happy anymore. Oh God. Or you lose a loved one and you're attached to their existence because you, you've never really deeply questioned that this person is not going to be there forever. And one of you guys will have to go first. Could be a wife, could be a mother, a father. You probably, you know, if, if you're really suffering, suffering, you probably never sat down and actually said, holy shit, there will be a moment in my life where my mother is not going to be here anymore or my wife is not going to be here anymore or I might not be there for them anymore. And so we attach. Then when we lose these attachments, we suffer, right? We grieve. We feel terrible, right? Uh, we attach to ideologies and beliefs. You know, if let's say, you know, your dad wants you to be a certain way and you do something different than what your dad wanted you to be. Your dad's going to suffer. And he created his own suffering because he's attached to an ideology, a certain way of things to be. And then, boom, his son does something completely different. Suffering there. Attachment. And it's true. When you look at all the root of all suffering, it's attachment. Attachment to happiness. Depression. You're attached to, to sadness. You're attached to depressive thoughts, negative thoughts. Attachment. Behind every case of suffering, there's attachment. Here is... The second bitter pill that you have to swallow as well, you know. I don't necessarily follow Buddhism or do what they do or certainly it's the nice thing about Buddhism. It, it's not really like a religion per se, like it, or let's say it's not trying to force things on, on people, right? It's very much more passive, right? More in tune with the Tao, in tune with the, with the universe. Uh, but... I can't argue with these, the, the, the first noble truths. I really can't. I really can't argue there. I, I, really. Like, what do you think? Look at your own suffering. The Buddha is within you. Look at your own suffering. You will see that behind any time you suffer is attachment. You're attached to something. And now you're suffering because of it. So, that's conclusion number two. Noble truth number two. Noble truth number three. To rid ourselves of suffering, we have to rid ourselves of desire, of craving. And so the way to do that is to essentially just sit through your cravings, sit through your desires until they too pass, they too are gone, right? And by being in that desirelessness state of mind, you be, you're enlightened, essentially. Because you're no longer in the pursuit of something in the future. You're no longer living in the past. 
you're fully present. And this is what being present is. A state of full presence is a state of desirelessness. Because if you're fully here, you're not desiring anything in the future and you're not desiring anything in the past. Now, a lot of people will mistake this and think, oh, so you, I should just ignore my sexual desires and my desire to eat. And not exactly. There is the, the, the fourth noble truth, which is the eightfold path, right? Uh, and that's sort of the Buddha realizes like, okay, we need more practical thing because it's not practical. You got to eat, right? At least if, if you're able to rid, rid of your sexual desire, we still got to eat or you're going to die, right? Um, but the idea is that you're so present and you're flowing with life. So you, you know, you happen to be in the present, the presence of someone who you're attracted to in the moment and they're attracted to you. And you're honoring the moment, you see? But you're not sitting in the moment thinking about like craving for the future, craving for that lover, craving for that desire, craving for that food. You're just, you're here. You're here. You're in the present. And that's the state of enlightenment. That's the state of desirelessness. You're not in the pursuit of something in the future. You're not in the pursuit of anything in the past. And that's the whole point of meditation, to bring you to the present moment. That's what Buddhists are so big on meditation. It brings them to the present moment. So to rid ourselves of all of the suffering, that's noble truth number three, we must rid ourselves of craving. And that's, that's his third noble truth. The fourth noble truth is the Buddha realized, okay, we need a practical way to do this because we're still humans, we're still here, and we want to end this cycle of, of, of rebirth and death. So he came up with the Eightfold Path, which is, you know, principles on how to live. And it's right action, right livelihood, right intent, right speech. You know, it's like a set of rights, in, in right, right meditation, concentration, right? And sort of came up with a system to live, right? This is how you live. Uh, this is how you speak. Speak only good of others. Basically, all the things that we know innately are right to do. That's the Eightfold Path, essentially, just to really conclude it. You know it's right to be kind to others and to make your livelihood, to make a living in an honest way and provide value, right? Uh, and, of course, he also has, like, a way of meditating and etc. So it's a, a little bit more of a, a, a greater system, let's say. And that's the system, right? That's the Buddhist system. And... The Eightfold Path, the middle way, if you will. So, that's, in a nutshell, what Buddhism stands for. The Four Noble Truths can sort of give you an idea of what Buddhism is. Of course, it's a lot deeper than that. Um, I am absolutely, I'm a beginner. That's why I'm making this video. I'm like a beginner to the Buddhism, to the Buddhist philosophy and the Buddhist way of living. That's why I'm making a video. Buddhism for beginners, I'm a beginner. So, I kind of went on and read about this stuff and wanted to share it with you guys. I might have messed up some of the things, some of the details or whatever, because I am a beginner myself and I just want to share with you guys here. So very interesting, very difficult to uh, argue against at least the first two noble truths. I don't know about the desire one. You might have an argument against that. I might have an argument against that, but... At least, if, like, it's like life is suffering. Like, life is suffering, and attachment is the root of all suffering. Now, we might agree or disagree on how we get rid of suffering. Maybe you don't, you, you even say, hey, you know what? I don't want to get rid of my suffering. You know what? You might even disagree that, hey, we're not even doing reincarnation. There's no cycle of, of death and rebirth. Because the, the whole idea behind Buddhism, behind the Buddha's enlightenment, is he realized we're in a cycle of death and rebirth. If you don't believe in reincarnation, obviously, none of that, you know, you might disagree with a lot of these things. But definitely, at least the first two noble truths, very difficult to argue against. Very difficult, you know, life is suffering. It's inherent, inherent within it. Even when you get what you want, you suffer because you lose it, because it's impermanent. The root of all attachment is suffering. And wherever there is suffering, there is attachment. I guarantee you, wherever there is suffering, there's, there's, there is attachment. And the third one, to end, to, to end suffering is to get rid of, attack, of desire there's a lot, you know, it's also not, it's also quite difficult to actually argue against that because that state of desirelessness is that state of presence 
is when we're connected to source energy, when we're here, when everything is beautiful and it's bliss and it's wonderful and you're flowing and you're in the flow, you're in the zone, you're really not in the pursuit of the future anymore. So in a way, actually, that's hard to argue against too because the whole state of getting rid of your desire is essentially just being present. That's difficult to argue against, right? That really is difficult. Now where you can have something to say is the Eightfold Path because the Eightfold Path is sort of like a way to live. And so how you want to go on about your life, you might disagree with, but the first three, really, come on, come on. Like that, that's, the, the Buddha was onto something, man. The Buddha was onto something, right? So I'm intrigued by Buddhism. I'm reading a book about it right now, the Buddhist teachings. Uh, very interesting philosophy, very interesting school of thought. I will keep sharing with you guys wisdom from different religions, different philosophies, different mystical schools. There's the occult, there's magic. I'm into that shit too, right? So that's it, God bless you all. I love every single one of you guys, but don't forget to subscribe. Or, see, life is suffering because you're gonna sleep with the fishes. So subscribe.